in a country that already has high levels of crime. And now it's the city with the highest number of serious crimes in the country. We're taking a closer look at a wave of deadly violence sweeping across Cape Town, South Africa. It's not about race or anything. It's not about race. It's not about race. Last year, more than 3,000 people were murdered here. The number has doubled in a decade. Gravity assisted Christian. Everybody's so friendly here. It's insane. Hitting up the chains. <laughs> Food from all over Indonesia, Malaysia, India. So good. Best pork bun I've ever had in my time. Cape Town is one of the most beautiful, stunning cities of the world. You have this incredible coastline, Table Mountain, Lion's Head, wildlife, just beautiful nature all around. But I felt like I had to make this video because there's sort of like this, I don't wanna say it's like an elephant in the room about Cape Town, but everybody wonders how safe is it really? Especially from what you see on the news and in the media. There are serious safety and security concerns. And, you know, when I was doing my research before going there, I saw a lot of that stuff online and it did make me a little bit more apprehensive and it did make me think about like, what was, what was I gonna expect when we get there? You know, how was I gonna navigate this city in a way where Olivia and I both felt safe? And so I wanted to share our experience in Cape Town and some of the things we did to feel more safe and make the most of our time there. All right, so right off the bat, our first impression of Cape Town was very interesting. We got to the airport. It was very easy to book an Uber. As soon as we got on the road, though, things got interesting right away because we started passing these townships, which are like these low-income, sort of impoverished areas where people live. And a lot of them are living without electricity, without proper plumbing. And so it was kind of like a strange first impression to be, you know, as soon as you leave the airport, that's what you see are these people living in these shacks. Now, another weird thing is like, there are these taxi buses stuffed and packed with people just like zooming and zipping past us on their way to the city. As soon as we got to the city center, like the CBD area, you immediately feel the energy of Cape Town. Cape Town is a busy, bustling, vibrant city. When you go to any of the, the main downtown neighborhoods, it's just everyone's working hard, trying to create a good life for themselves. There's a lot of people from all over the rest of Africa that move there for a better life. It's just a city that's alive. It's very alive. And the weather's great year round too. So there's this sort of energy about Cape Town that, that I love. Oh man, I love Koshan. <laughs> Same note, life is very hard for most people in Cape Town. Uh, minimum wage is very low, it's, it's just over a dollar an hour. And so you got people working really hard, but you also got people that are, you know, scrambling to get by. We saw our fair share of homeless people right out of the gates. Like as soon as we entered the city center, you see a decent amount of homeless people. Uh, we made sure, and I'll, I'll say this too, before going to Cape Town, I made sure to book an Airbnb that was in a safe area uh, we stayed in Devatakant, which is considered a very good area. You're gonna pay more for it because it's in a, in a sort of a, you're gonna pay a premium for, for a nicer stay, but it also had 24 hour security. And so as soon as we got there, we were greeted at the front desk. They had a few people there and they even shared with us, you know, we have 24 seven security here. We don't recommend walking at night. It's always best to Uber places if it's later in the day. That being said, our stay was a luxury stay. I would consider it a luxury stay. Our Airbnb was really nice, really modern and sleek, but it wasn't cheap either. It was, you know, you're paying a pretty penny for it. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. Dude, I love the balcony. This is our balcony, yo. Wow. Do that view. 
is so magical. And what's not surprising is that the more touristy areas are considered safer, far more safer. The likelihood of anything happening to you is very, very slim, especially during the daytime. There's a reason why the V&A waterfront gets over 25 million visitors. It's because it's safe. It, it wouldn't get that amount if it wasn't safe. It's very safe. There's security everywhere and you feel comfortable. And a lot of, you know, Greenpoint, Seapoint, Devatakant, a lot of those areas are considered very safe. You do notice though, right away, there is private security everywhere, in front of businesses, in front of hotels. There's actually more private security than police officers, which any fellow traveler would know when you go to any city in the world, if you notice that there is a larger number of private security, it's for a reason. There are certain parts of the city that are not so much recommended, like surprisingly the CBD, the downtown area, did Olivia and I feel completely safe? I would say we are in the CBD, and we were told by locals we have to be a little bit more on guard because some of the most crime, I guess, happens in this area. So we have all our filming gear, and we're really using the GoPro more than GH5, so it's a little bit discreet. So a lot of the tips that I'm going to give you are common sense, really. Don't wear flashy stuff. Don't flaunt wealth. Don't walk around at night. If you're gonna be in areas that are considered a little bit more sketchy, don't go alone, go in a group. Uh, even on the hikes in Cape Town, there's stories of people getting mugged if you're, they're going too early or too late in the day. So if you're gonna go at those times, make sure to go in a group as well. But, at, but if you have the choice, I'd recommend going where there's more people on the trails. So a lot of this is just logical and you know practice situational awareness be aware of your environment and your surroundings it's kind of an odd thing though because we felt that like the people of cape town were some of the friendliest most down to earth like smiley people we've ever met just genuinely kind and not wanting anything from you just nice people and so you have this juxtaposition of like really nice and friendly people with with like sometimes you need to watch your back kind of thing and so that's, you know, that's expected of any place in the world where there's an enormous wealth gap between the rich and the poor, because it creates people that are more desperate, that are looking for those opportunistic, you know, crimes. That being said, there's also thousands and thousands of South Africans that live very awesome, comfortable lifestyles in Cape Town. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting better, I feel like. I feel like the city's putting a ton of energy into upping the security and safety of everyone, but it's not an issue that can be resolved overnight either. Cape Town's been dealing with a lot of challenges in the last 10 years. You know, they had a crazy water shortage. Never before in the history of the modern world has a whole city of this kind threatened to run out of water for its citizens completely. They're still dealing with load shedding, which is where they basically lose electricity multiple times a day for hours on end. Is increasing rolling blackout. The country's deepening energy crisis. Full-scale blackouts for hours on end. It just turned eight o'clock load shedding in this area so we're in the restaurant eating sushi in the dark they have a very low hourly income the national minimum wage is now at 21 rand 69 for each ordinary hour 23 rand and 19 cents an hour but is it enough to survive there's a high level of unemployment still covid didn't make things better at all it made things far worse 34 percent of people uh, are now unemployed and you know, one thing I also didn't even get into is government corruption and the history and remnants of apartheid. Corruption, and some people say is now endemic in our society. And the wealth gap is an ongoing thing. So you mix that all together and it creates this recipe where certain areas of the city you want to avoid, you get the idea. That being said, <laughs> to, to us, it's one of the best places we've ever traveled to. Literally insanely beautiful, so many activities, very active people. For a first timer, choose one of the safer areas to stay in. One thing we, we also chose to do uh, towards the end of our stay there after you know three or four weeks of being there was we had done a large majority of the touristy things you'd expect us to do. A lot of you know the, the road trips, the, the coastal drives, all that. But we also wanted to see a different side of Cape Town. You know, people that were lower income, how did they live? How do they, you know, commute to the city? Where, what's their lifestyle like? 
So we found a township tour with a guide, and I always recommend going with a guide because I'm not gonna be walking in areas you know, that I don't know anything about on our own. It's just not prudent. Our tour guide just let us know that we can only stay in this two block radius. We can't cross over because supposedly they could try taking our cameras or whatever, so. So we found a guide who took us around Langa. Langa is the oldest township in all of South Africa. It's also the biggest township with the closest proximity to the city. So it's it's been growing very fast because more people are moving there, not just from other parts of South Africa, but from many other African countries. So we decided to do this township tour. It was very insightful. It gave us a window into their world of, you know, different creative ways that the community was was thriving, you know, and coming up with, you know, whether it's through art, whether it's through the start of new businesses, but the people are not just hopeful, but there's there's this resilience about them where they're not victims of their past. They're, they're, they're leading with like a growth mindset of, you know, we're gonna solve some of these issues we've been having ourselves. We're gonna take it upon ourselves and, and have a sense of ownership here. Regardless of go government corruption, we're gonna make it, you know, and that's that was a really beautiful thing to be a part of. We have been victims a lot. We've cried and whipped. Now it's time for us to leave because it, if every time everyone is crying to say this was wrong this was not on this is come on there will be no more tears so we need to we need to smile mm. we, we need to we, we need to that that is the essence of our thing we need to change the perception we want to to narrate langa differently as opposed yes apartheid happened but apartheid is not who we are it's something that happened. It was part of our journey. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. What so does Ubuntu mean? Ubuntu, it means that irrespective of what color you are, of what race you are, of what nationality, we are brothers. We must connect. Irrespective of who we are. Doing good without expecting nothing in return. <laughs>